Hey everybody, it's Lon Sybin, and you know I love mini PCs, and you're not going to get much smaller than this one. Uh, this is the Zotac Pi 225, and as you can see here, it's not much larger than uh, maybe a two and a half inch solid state drive, but this is a fully functional, for the most part, uh, Windows computer running with an Intel processor. It costs about 200 bucks, and we're going to be taking a very close look at this here in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no brand or anyone else has reviewed this content before I uploaded it. So let's get into it and see what this thing can and mostly can't do. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This reminds me a lot of a solid state drive you might pop into your desktop or laptop PC. It is all metal because it pretty much is a heat sink. The whole case is the heat sink here. There's no fan, uh, so it uses its case to get rid of the heat that it generates. And we'll talk about its thermal performance a little later in the video here. So you probably want to figure out some way to keep the top and bottom clear because it does get pretty warm and you'll want to keep the air, this is the natural airflow uh, going around it just to keep it from getting too hot. I don't think it's going to overheat on you as you'll see in a few minutes, but uh, it definitely heats up quite a bit and relies on the case to get rid of its excess heat. It is powered by an Apollo Lake N3350 processor. That's the Intel low-end system on a chip. It has four gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. It's configured as dual channel RAM, so you'll see some performance benefits from that in one area, but not so much in another, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. Uh, it also unfortunately has 32 gigabytes of onboard storage uh, that is not upgradable. You do have an SD card slot here, so you can augment some of that. Uh, you could also uh, use its USB ports here to get some additional storage plugged in, but you will struggle with this, especially when you first get it. Uh, because I had to install that huge Windows update, which it does not have enough storage on board to actually install. So I had to plug in an external hard drive, have it use that. And then after that update was installed, I had to go through and remove the old version of Windows just to get enough space to install some other stuff on here. So you will constantly be struggling uh, with the very limited amount of space on here. Having 64 gigs would have been better, uh, but that is not going to be its only limitation. I do like, though, its input-output capability here because it is running with a USB-C port. In fact, it's got two of them, and these are for data, but also for display output. So these are going to support docks like the one it comes with here. It actually comes with a lot of stuff. Uh, so you're going to get this dock in the box that plugs into either one of those ports. You'll get two traditional USB 3.0 ports and an HDMI output here for connecting it up to a monitor. I was also able to get it to run as a dual monitor setup just by plugging in two of those USB-C adapters. You can see me doing that uh, in this little clip of B-roll I'm running over the video now. So it is uh, capable of running two displays. It'll support 4K, uh, but only at 30 hertz. You're not going to get 60 hertz out of this, no HDR or anything fancy like that, but you can uh, hook it up to a 4K display and get 30 frames per second output. But I think the sweet spot on this one is going to be dual uh, 1080p, but pretty cool to see that on there. Unfortunately, this is not a power delivery port, so you can't use one of those docks and just get everything connected up with a single cable. Uh, power goes in on the back here, and that is a micro USB connector. Now look here, uh, it may be hard to see, but it's uh, five volts at three amps. It doesn't take a lot of power going in, uh, which means that will impact its performance. It's basically running with a tablet charger, maybe a little bit better than a tablet charger, but nonetheless uh, running pretty much at a uh, USB voltage here. And as a result, uh, you're going to be limited in its performance because this processor is just not running as fast as it can run. And you're going to be limited as to what you can plug into these USB ports without some other type of USB power connected to it. And we'll do some experiments with that in a minute as well. So you've got to be you know, really careful and kind of manage what you plug in because you could uh, maybe have two external hard drives plugged into this that might uh, shut down the computer because it can't deliver enough power to those hard drives and also keep the computer on. So uh, again, some built-in limitations with this one. Uh, you have that uh, SD card slot I mentioned earlier, and then uh, the power button is here on the side. But that is it. It's pretty simple. Uh, most of what you're going to plug into this machine is going to be done uh, through its USB-C port. So let's see now how this thing performs, and then I'll give you some other thoughts on it. Now, before we get into our usual set of performance benchmarks, I wanted to try out my ASUS USB-C monitor. Uh, I bought this a while back and reviewed it on the channel. You can find it linked below in the video description. 
uh, and it runs off of a single USB-C cable. It doesn't require its own power supply. In fact, there's no option for that. Uh, so it gets everything it needs, the display data as well as the power uh, from the computer through a single cable. Very convenient, although in this instance it may not be ideal, but nonetheless it does work provided you plug in nothing else. Now if I take out my uh, little external hard drive here that I've got in this uh, little uh, enclosure and plug it into its USB 3 port, uh, some terrible things happen here. So it'll just basically turn off the monitor first. Sometimes the whole computer shuts down. Other times it uh, kind of reconfigures itself and tries to determine what it's going to provide power to. So in this instance, it looks like, oh, there it goes. It's, it just went down on us. Uh, so generally, you really, again, want to be careful about uh, what you put onto those USB ports so you don't overload it and shut down your computer. I would suggest, too, maybe using a Bluetooth keyboard or mouse if you can, just to prevent having to have additional things plugged in. Those don't draw all that much power, the US, USB keyboards, but if you're really trying to be careful with this, with its power management, uh, that might be one way to go. So this keyboard uses a dongle, but I could get another one that maybe just uses Bluetooth. It does have Bluetooth built in in addition to AC wireless too. So anything you can get wireless versus wired uh, might be the way to go or uh, plug in a USB hub that has its own power to uh, prevent what you just saw from happening to you. But generally, I think you can work with it. Now, because it's not running with a lot of power, you're not going to see a lot of performance out of this. We found uh, web browsing to be rather sluggish on here. You can see my YouTube channel running and it was uh, struggling to render in the rest of the page while the video was playing. Uh, the good news is that the video itself didn't drop any frames. It actually does okay playing back video, but uh, anything that's really CPU intensive that's not accelerated through hardware uh, is going to lag quite a bit on here. You can also see how long it took for the NASA website to load up, even running off of my AC wireless network. So overall, very, very slow performance just for browsing the web. And on the browserbench.org speedometer test, we got a score of 12, uh, which actually puts it behind uh, the Raspberry Pi 3, or at least within the margin of error with that. Uh, this is not the new Raspberry Pi 3 B+, which is actually faster than this one, uh, but it is in line with the 3 that came out a couple of years ago. So really not performing very well uh, on this test at all. And of course, we ran Microsoft Word in that newsletter template we like to use to test everything out. It worked okay, but it felt sluggish compared to other $200 PCs running with the same chipset. So again, those limitations in how they clock the CPU will be evident no matter what you do with it, uh, with a couple of exceptions, which we'll get to a little later in the video. Let's move on now to gaming. Now, don't adjust your TV sets, kids. This is Rocket League running on the Zotac, but we're only getting about eight to 10 frames per second on it. Uh, this is 1080p with all the settings turned down. Typically on an Apollo Lake device like this one at around this price point, we can get around 30 frames per second give or take out of them, especially when they have dual channel memory installed, but this one is just not getting us there. Again, we're seeing this lower performance across all the other things we've done on this computer so far, and it's certainly playing out in gaming. We also ran Half-Life 2, which does usually do very well on these Apollo Lake devices, typically uh, north of 30 frames per second, but here we're only getting about 15 to 25 frames per second max on it. So again, uh, not doing too well, even on games that run very well on other Apollo Lake devices that cost the same. Uh, Minecraft equally suffered here. It was not drawing in all that quickly. And uh, we were only seeing about 10, 15, 20 frames per second on that as well. So not a very good performer on the games either. And on the 3D Mark CloudGate test, we got a score of 1,320. That puts it behind the Azul Byte 3 we looked at a few weeks ago that costs the same and is also fanless. And that Byte 3 also has a quad core versus a dual core chip in this Zotac. And we see the difference in performance there on the physics test where we see a much higher frame rate uh, due to having more cores and a CPU that I think is able to run a little faster than this one is able to run given the thermal limitations of the packaging. Uh, the Byte 3 is also uh, featuring upgradable storage, which is not on the Zotac. And we also ran the 3D Mark stress test, and there we got a score of 96.7%. Now, 97% is passing, so it's relatively 
uh, good about its thermals and that it's not throttling down all that much, but I think they're actually pre-throttling this device to prevent it from having to throttle down later if it gets too hot. So uh, again, although it's doing okay on its thermals, it's performing so poorly, it really doesn't matter here at all. And we also booted up Kodi and ran our 140 megabits per second HEVC file to see how that played back on it. And we had a couple of skip frames here or there, but uh, surprisingly decent video performance with that 10-bit file that is uh, being down converted from 4K to 1080p. Uh, it was doing better than I thought it would, but that's one of the things that Apollo Lake can do very well is uh, in hardware decode that video. However, it did not pass any muster on home theater usage, so it was not able to uh, convert down to 24 frames per second for 24p movies. It did not support lossless audio pass-through either, so for all the home theater tests that we do, it just doesn't stack up there either. Uh, we did also try to run Linux on it, and we were successful in doing so. We booted up Ubuntu and got uh, dual displays working, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and audio all worked. So that was a good thing. Uh, but again, we were seeing very similar performance issues with the computer uh, just doing day-to-day -day tasks like web browsing and word processing and that kind of thing. So it's not going to run any faster with Linux, but it can run Linux if you want. And I'm really struggling here to try to figure out what the use case is for this computer. It is small and that's cool, but it's not doing very well because of its, of its size here. And I think that uh, severely limits its usefulness. I guess you could maybe run this as like a headless Linux machine or something like that, but uh, for $200, I think you might be able to buy a couple of Raspberry Pis and uh, divvy up some of the workload to those, and you can have a headless computer for $60 or $70 versus what uh, you're paying for this one. I did like what they included in the box, though. They give you that uh, dock here. You get a, a restore disk, which is something you don't typically see with a $200 PC. They included a little mounting bracket and stuff as well. So it felt like a very consumer-friendly package when I took it out, but that friendliness went away the minute I tried to get Windows up and running. And I kid you not, this thing spent an entire day trying to update itself, and it was a very frustrating uh, first 24 hours with it to get it up and running. And then all these performance issues we've seen with it uh, once we did get it up there really uh, did not lend itself to a good computing experience. And I think ultimately these, uh, these Apollo Lake chips and the Gemini Lake chips that we'll be seeing in a few weeks really are not designed to run in this form factor. Uh, the old Atom Cherry Trail chips were really good for these things because there wasn't a huge performance hit on them and they were designed for this kind of form factor. But uh, this just isn't working for me and I have a hard time recommending this at $200 to anybody. I would love to see this maybe at a hundred bucks maybe without the Windows license to use as a little Linux computer or something. That might be kind of fun, but uh, generally you can do a lot better for the same money. And we've looked at a lot of computers that can do just that. So that's going to do it for our look at the Zotac Pi 225. And this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including gold level supporters of the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.